And just as we started off the last one paying off promissory notes, it's with more promissory notes. I'm noticing got a couple more. And this downward spiral is beginning for this guy and this guy. The two people who started wars without, well, started warfare. Uh, not that this guy started it. And uh, really have started paying the heaviest price for that. Of course, this guy's just gaining the uh, farmer uh, from him. Anyway, I'll pay out those bills with more bills, and ouch. Well, the feeling that this guy's doing well <coughs> has kind of put a crimp on people's willingness to deal with him as much. Um, and his military activities as well. But there's also this guy who's doing pretty well too, so there's kind of a, uh, all right, well, I'm willing to deal, but I, I want a little bit better. I, I, you're going to pay a little more. You're not going to get quite the benefit out of the trade that I do. Although we both get a benefit on the trading prices. So, a white, which is up here, purchasable at 21 for him, cost him 4 yellows. Now four yellows would only get him 16 and he'd pay 21 so he got off five bucks cheaper. But this guy who made the deal sold a white that he would have sold for 16 and ended up with four yellows that he doesn't really necessarily need four yellows. He wasn't in the market for them at that moment which is worth um, 24 to him. So there's a lot of play in terms of the fair price that, that you can give. At some point or another, it's just worth selling to the market. Of course, when you do that, you're dropping your price of your commodity. So, there's a mixture there. It's better to deal with other people if you can get not just the benefit, but you'll also be keeping your prices a little bit more inflated on your market item. So, if you do need to sell them, uh, you can later. If you end up selling, you know, three now at four each, Eventually, the price is going to get down to the point where you're not even making that much. And maybe other people aren't buying them that much, unless the price gets down. The other side of the problem is the person who's perceived as needy. In this case, this guy wanted a red. He had a pile of yellows. Yellows are cheap as hell. There's a whole big pile up there. And, well, the price isn't necessarily reflecting. But there's this perception that they're fairly cheap. He was offering two yellows, which is worth uh, 11 bucks for a red. And I cheated. Uh, I'm sorry, for two reds, uh, which is worth 18 bucks. He wanted to give the seven bucks difference between the two, and he was cool with that. Uh, but he said, no, wait, you know, I only need one yellow. I really only need one and I want more money. And I, you know, skimmed an extra buck. He probably will need this other yellow at some point, but he doesn't think he needs it right now. So, um, you know, it, it, it's worth trying to squeeze an extra buck or two when you're not sure. This guy couldn't afford pure cash in the deal, so, well. The commodities kind of help balance things out. Well, rather than pushing more military costs out for this guy, we've gone completely around and finished. He's uh, made a choice to spend our flagging into another territory, which he wanted to do anyway. Now he's got a few bucks left after buying everything he wants. He has enough. Uh, food. He could have sold one food for three bucks. That would have given him enough bucks to buy a red get an army on the board, and be able to do an army maneuver phase, which might be a positive thing overall. Uh, see, his problem is he looks over here, sees this guy and this guy are all building armies. I think the only way he can survive uh, and he can increase his production is with these armies. So I think he is going to go with that. He's going to sell that food 
and it's going to take a couple more rounds to go around because you can't sell and buy in the same phase. But nobody else is really doing anything. Everybody else is locked in with what they want right now. Yeah, the only person who could have responded who wanted to was this guy. He's got a bunch of cubes. He might be able to get another uh, blue cube. Certainly would be able to by trading the white in. Um, he's still got that option. He's seeing another army growing there. Uh, I don't know where that's going to go. Three armies is ugly. It's going to leave him with one if he attacks, but my production's going to be low otherwise. This is a scary, scary situation for me. I think I've got to build another army uh, after seeing that. So I'm going to... Uh, see, here's the problem. i got to sell this for enough that I can buy a blue for. And there doesn't seem to be a loose blue except this guy. And I don't know if he's willing um, to take a white in exchange for that. He might take a white and this cash. Uh, that would probably be fair and that would be a better deal than anyone else can give. So I think he's going to go with that on his trade. Oh, but that's his army. No, he can't afford that. He's got that set aside. Yeah, I think uh, it's a situation where he just can't build the army. He doesn't have the cash. He's got enough promissory notes. He's in enough trouble. And just hope for the best. Maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe he won't produce again. Oh, boy. Too many directions I'm going, and this isn't on the board. Um, so this guy, I noticed... Damn it, I set up to buy myself a black. I don't want a black. I can't run that. Actually, I am set up to run that. Okay. All right, so we'll flag that black. And I don't know where to put it. I mean, obviously, it's not going to help here, so I'll just dump it here. Although, that's near my enemy. <laughs> but I'm set up to start producing blacks, and... Well, maybe that'll work out for the best. During the placement, an interesting little bluffing mechanism happens where he's putting his, and not really bluffing, but he's putting his military unit into play there to say, hey, come on, uh, don't waste both of our time. We both have produce. Uh, let's not burn it, because if you spend a yellow, you'll have to come in and... If you don't attack me, I'll attack you and spend a yellow because I can't leave you there. So, we got a problem, right? All right. Uh, now, I think I'm over here. And it doesn't look like he's got anything to build, but we'll keep working around. Well, we're almost all the way through the uh, development phase. We're seeing a lot of uh, the blue, the energy being created here. Also seeing maybe the reemergence of black into the game. White? Not yet. White's gonna still be hard to grab a hold of, but here's the weird thing. We're right now on his side. He has a food which he could use to move. He doesn't want to spend it right now because it would move in. Green though has two food. So he can slide into a position where he's either grabbing another black or grabbing a white. Now, right now, blacks are the better. So he's going to pass, but he's going to actually make his move. Into there. And that throws, you know, a, a tax on everyone. Well, we're not going to pay that tax. There's no question. So that fight is going to happen. That's why we built that army. But there we are, and that's the end of that. And now we go to the actual production. Hopefully everybody has enough cubes to run the industries they planned on. Okay, I got an ouch. Um, I made a mistake here. Those don't get sucked off the track. And I think we have one, two, f I think we pulled one off there. I just ran into the situation with yellow where they would have been pulling like four more off. And maybe I did it before. They get... Uh, kept track of with something other than these cubes. Um, whatever that is, I'll use dice for it. But yeah, we've got uh, more production than the counter mix can handle. And that, that's kind of a disturbing factor. Um, but 
less disturbing than the price going down, uh, going up because of higher production, which really had me weirded out. Okay. Well, it turns out that was only a temporary condition. Um, enough yellows came out that I could replenish it, and I think that's usually the case. It didn't happen with the reds, though, here. He's got some five extra red pieces that are being kept track of using uh, a die. And now we move the first player marker, and then we'll pay the interests, which, bang, again, he's not going to have the cash for it. Bad planning? Sure. Uh, he had to place pieces, though. He's hoping to be able to pay some of those off. Uh, almost as painful as a square each, so pretty much a, a, a new hex costs significantly more than the 20 25 bucks that you'd be paying back in general because you're you're putting at least a, a black a white and a red um that's a that's a decent amount of money there so you want to pay those off i think <laughs> there's an interesting little phenomenon which if people start following these values too closely especially the suggested value well it can come into play. So this guy really wanted food, but this guy only has food. So if he, if the uh, first player, who's kind of disliked at the table because of the military operations as well as doing well, uh, you know, cut a deal right away, he would have kept the price of his food up. But instead, what happened was he needed to generate some cash, so he traded, uh, he sold three food and dropped the price further, and this guy was then willing to deal at the now lowered prices that he wouldn't do back on his turn. So, you know, there's kind of this, uh, <laughs> you know, he's still going to have to sell some food, though. There's no question there, I think beginning to see sort of the reverse of speculation here. This guy's holding stuff, doesn't really need the cash right now. He doesn't have enough to do everything he wants to. So he turns a blue in. Just to... The price is pretty good right now. He thinks he's got enough production to keep himself alive for a while. Uh, he doesn't want to fall too far behind that. But... He also doesn't want to fall too far above, and he threw more red in just because that's his cash cow. All right, well, he sold off some of his yellows, eventually getting to the point where he had enough cash to build the last... No, there's still another one. Another farm, um, which is great for him. Uh, I don't know how much they help. They're not... It's lots and lots of cubes, but it doesn't have much value. And the problem is people are industrializing, even though the price of food is low, so it's not really helping him. Basically, some of the, the hyper-specialized um, economies are perfectly able to still make money by industrializing. So even though the price is, maybe not with the price as low as it's getting, but, you know, with him... Uh, he, he's basically got worthless food on his hands that nobody seems to want. Now, people, even industrialized people, will say, ah, okay, I'll take it at that price if it gets cheap enough. But, you know, cheap enough is, I don't know, three bucks each is pretty damn cheap. I think all the actual building and flagging is done. We can see this guy's kind of expanded into there. But now, we're on the poor guy who's been beaten up all day. And he's going to play his yellow now in order to activate his armies. But he built two armies. One of them, he's just going to take this out. But the second one, though, the question is, does he march in on this guy's black territory? Because that means he's going to have to pay a lot to produce... Or does he just march into a white territory, which has automation on it, and it's a much cheaper production, so he's more likely to actually obtain the benefits of his conquest. Um, this seems more flexible to me, in addition to being more valuable. 
Anyway, we'll hit the production and then send this off. And as we move the first player marker around, eh, we've not had all that many turns total, but they take a long time, at least for me. Um, all the passing around, making a decision on each single thing. Now, granted, you kind of plan for things ahead of time, but it's rough. Um, well, production-wise, he managed to steal one of those white cubes. We've got ridiculous numbers. Here's nine reds that uh, don't exist. 21 yellows that weren't existing. I'll take three of them back. In the pool. That's a yeah, kind of painful thing to keep track of. He's got 18 sitting there. And he's just got to sell them. And he's going to sell them at a buck each, basically. So they're worthless. Uh, however... This is not worthless. These are worth four victory points each at the end of the game. While his production isn't going to be as high as some other players, I, I, and I think he's really falling behind now that the food prices have plummeted, uh, he's got this big leap in terms of total areas. He's been able to buy a flag every turn uh, because the production's been high enough. And there's still another one left. If he can grab that, he will. You know, why not? Nobody else, uh, you know, it, it, monopolizing this stuff isn't valuable, though. Uh, not unless he starts buying it up. And then he could start trading it to people for greater value. That's kind of tricky, though. There's not a lot of money, and you can't have a lot of money if you're buying it up. Of course, once he gets down to here and starts dumping it in here, he'll be getting slight amounts of money <laughs> that, uh, you know, you can use towards buying it back up. But it's at a loss. Every, every purchase you make is at a loss. And there's, he's got no other way of making cash except by trading in things. So cornering the market isn't really the option here. The existence of those markets is kind of this... Uh, means of preventing real capitalistic type practices from taking place. The kinds of uh, practices that something like supremacy with its terribly broken system was intended to model. Well, here maybe they more successfully model the market, but it's a market with exter external um, aspects. There's somebody who's not a player who's willing to pay for these, and somebody who's not, and, and the same problem exists in supremacy, really, and somebody who's not a player willing to supply these, and there's no limit, there's no hard limit. You can't buy all the food, and then everybody will, you know, have a food problem and have to come to you. And to some extent that makes sense, but it doesn't make sense that there'd be fixed maximums uh, and fixed minimums that are reachable. Uh, you might need them as game mechanics, but they should never actually happen. Now, maybe I'm playing so poorly that they are happening, and normal players, you know, experienced players would prevent the prices from hitting that side. Certainly, the food, I think, shouldn't have gotten as low as it did. This, ah, I think this guy jumped into the reds too quickly with his, uh, his split, his starting piece, but... That definitely had an effect on it. And now we're beginning to see things like whites producing in significant numbers, blacks producing in reasonable numbers, so that these things aren't absolutely scarce anymore. Ah.